can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Can't touch this. My 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 touch this. Oh, my God. So hard, makes me say, Oh my God, thank you for impressing me. Well, my two mind and two mind is good. When you don't get down, I see the whole thing from the old days, and I know it's such a mess. It's good. You can't touch it. I told you, old oh boy, you can't touch this. Yeah, that's how we live it in your show. You can't touch this. Hi. Hi. <laughs> welcome. Hi, hi, beautiful people. Welcome, welcome. I'm in a happy mood, y'all. It is. What day is it? It's Tuesday, about to be Wednesday, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Friday is Nevada day, so I'm so happy because it's no school, no Zoom. I get to relax, I get to have some fun, go outside, just ride my bike, and I get to sleep. So I've been having sleep, but not enough sleep, y'all. This distance learning has been an interesting one, but a very fun one, and I have been making a lot of very cool digital interactive activities for my kiddos. So today, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to share with you how I'm making my Halloween fun for my students online using different resources such as virtual um, Nearpod, such as ClassTag, um, Google Slides, Google Classroom, and Flipgrid and so many more resources which I'm gonna share with you and get right into it. Before, before I do y'all, let me tell you, I am a teacher and I am a superhero. That's what I'm gonna be for Halloween. What are you gonna be? Okay, tell me in the chat box what you're gonna be for Halloween. I'd love to know. And also tell me what you're gonna do if you are a teacher, what are you going to do to celebrate Halloween this year and have fun with your kiddos online if you're teaching virtual learning. So let's get into it. I'm gonna share with you what I do for my virtual Halloween week. I've been prepping since about two weeks now, and I just wanted to share with you all, I've been meaning to record this for many of you, so thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this video. I'll go ahead and share my video and my screen with you all. <laughs> and so first things first, what I do is I go into class tag and I always announce to my parents what is going on in the week. So I can share with you what I've been announcing this week. And right here, you'll see it says, Happy Monday, please read. This is a very important message. I start off the week with a positive message with all my parents. I hope they enjoy it. If not, you know, it's cool, but hopefully they get some motivation out of it because I try my best to put motivational quotes in my Happy Monday posts for them about being um, awesome and having a wonderful week. And then I give them some small, some friendly reminders about different things such as small group, Google Classroom, Zoom, Math, and office hours. But getting into the spirit week. So what my school has been, what my school has decided to do is a virtual spirit week. A virtual spirit week online. It's gonna be super, super, super fun, y'all. I just have to stop share and show you. I am excited for this. It's our first time doing a virtual online Zoom experience, so I'm super excited, and I'll be sure to update you all on how it went and any tips and tricks, any little difficulties we had, and any things that we overcame and any obstacles we had. So what we did was we created this flyer on Poster My Wall. So it's super simple. All you have to do is go on Poster My Wall postermywall.com. They have many different flyers that you can use. They are free or you can pay for them, but I love to use free things. So, and I love to uh, give credit to those who I use free things with. So I'm giving credit to Poster My Wall. Thanks for giving me free templates. They are so many different themes that you can choose from. As you see, they have many different themes you can use for your kiddos. It could be like a Halloween truck for treat or a Halloween virtual online Zoom or you can just have a Halloween bingo party, a Halloween uh, live music dance costume party, whatever you like, they have it here on Poster My Wall. I that highly recommend this for educators for everyone. Even if you're just a regular person who's not teaching kiddos, this Poster My Wall is for everyone, anyone in any field background. So I use that. And so that's what I used to create this really cool flyer. I created two flyers and I put them side by side using Google Slides. So this is one in English and this is another in Spanish. What I did was I put them side by side in Google Slides and then I saved it into a document. And so this was super cool. On August, October 26th, Monday, we did Spooky Hair Day. On 27th, we dressed up as a teacher career day and then October 28th, we did Pajama Day, which was a Halloween costume contest 
on October 29th. And then we'll have our Halloween Zoom fun online from 1.30 to 3 p.m. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna have different Zoom meetings. So students are going to jump in and out. So they're going to jump into different Zoom meetings for dance party, that'll be a different Zoom meeting link. Mystery room, a different Zoom meeting link. Escape room, a different Zoom meeting link. Game room, a different Zoom meeting link. And show and tell their Halloween costumes, a different Zoom meeting link. So this is our first time trying it. We hope it's successful and I'll let you know how it goes. So again, I shared this with my parents on Sunday just to let them know what's ahead of the week so that they can know this is the last week of Spirit Week and students can participate. They do not have to participate in this virtual Halloween because I know some students do not participate. And so class tag has been my main way of communicating with parents. What I'm doing um, tomorrow on Tuesday, wait, this was posted today on Tuesday, and what I'm doing on Thursday is I'm going to have a hangout with my students who've been completing their Google Classwork. I want to give my students some fun incentives to complete their Google Classwork so that they can be rewarded. So on Thursday, I'm having lunch and movie time with my kiddos, and then I'm just giving parents a friendly reminder of Google Classwork and what they need to do in order to receive a point on Google Assignments. So there's CERN, there's Freckle, I use Nearpod a lot for story problem, reading and writing, and RAS kids. And then I also have them go on Typing Club to get skills with typing. And again, I do friendly reminders about student dress up day and office hours. Here, I also, these, you see this red, this red thing right here? That is because this is scheduled. So on Friday, this is going to be scheduled and sent to the parent. So on Friday, I'm going to, this is going to schedule and send at 6 a.m. about Happy Nevada Day. There is no live Zoom classes. And then this is going to be scheduled on Thursday. No Zoom classes on Friday, right? Reminding the parents again, y'all, let me tell you, you have to have to remind these parents over and over again because these parents are super busy. They have so much on their plate. They have so much on their plate. So I have to remind them just to keep them up and let them know what's going on so that they don't miss out and they don't forget because I know it's difficult with kids and work, it's, it's difficult. And so remind your parents so much. I highly recommend you use class tag to communicate with your parents because you can schedule posts. And as a teacher, it's less stress and less um, time management for you. You get to do a lot with class tag. So I just wanted to put that little tip in there for you all. <laughs> and so here, what I do here on Thursday, when I schedule posts, I'm just going to list the events planned. I have student luncheon, for students to complete their assignments. And then we start our online Zoom fun. We are gonna have a costume contest at 1 p.m., but that's only for students who win the costume in their classroom. And so what we're doing is in our classroom on Thursday, the whole school, we're having students dress up in costumes and then we're choosing winners by students voting in the class. And then at 1 p.m., the students are going to all gather together from each grade level. So from kindergarten, first, second, and third, and fourth, the winners from each classroom are going to come together, and we're going to pick one winner from each grade. I hope that makes sense. Okay, we're just going to pick one winner from each grade at 1 p.m. And at 1.30, we're going to start the Zoom online fun, going to dance party, game room, show and tell, escape room, all that good stuff. And if that did not make sense, here you go, my Halloween costume contest template for you all. So, here you have a Halloween costume introduction. Then I have slides welcoming everyone to the Halloween costume contest. I have the Ghoulie contest rules asking, are you ready to choose our winners? Then I include information on how to choose the winners by typing in the Zoom chat box. Then the students have a picture and name of the student with their teacher's name, and the second student with their student picture, student name, third student picture with their student name. Then that's kindergarten, only three students because there are only three classes, one winner in each class, and then we'll do an overall winner at the end. Then we say stop, thank you for voting, time is up, chat box is closed. Again, we have first grade now coming up, two minute timer set. One student from first grade class, student picture, second student with their student name and student picture, third student with their student name, student picture, and that's the end of first grade, only three classes, so only three students. And then we say stop, thank you for voting, and this, is, and this keeps repeating it over and over for second grade, for third grade, and for fourth grade, and then at the end of this, the students are going to go into, like, 
do we need a tiebreaker? So they're going to watch a little cool video. They just click this video. It's a celebration video on Go Noodles. So I'll just click it. It'll open up into a new tab. And while we are trying to tally up all the scores and see who's our winner, I'm going to be refreshing and typing in congratulations to the winner. Then I'll refresh this again. And everyone will see the slide and the names of the winners will pop up. There'll be one winner from kindergarten, one winner from first grade, one winner from second grade, one winner from third grade, and one winner from fourth grade. And then they each win a prize. So the prize that we are winning that I'm having for my school is where, um, I'll show you, because this is just a template. But if you want an idea of what you can do for your school, let me go. Okay, so here you go. This is what my uh, school is giving our kiddos who won the costume contest. They are winning a Futuro Academy face mask and a Futuro Academy water bottle. And our office staff, our receptionist, did a wonderful job. She is amazing. She created these water bottles. She put the logo on the water bottles and the logo on the face mask because she does do this also on the side. A little hustle. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so I'm really thankful to, for her for making these for the students. She did a wonderful job and she took the time out of her busy day just to create these gifts for the kiddos. So definitely want to shout out Miss Salcedo if you're watching. <laughs> but yeah, um, so you can just insert the image there for your kiddos when you do this. And at the end, we tell them, thank you for joining us. Go ahead and join the other fun rooms because we do have fun rooms. So on my template, you will not see this. This is for our school. We are having like a Zoom online fun where the kiddos can go into different rooms, dance party, mystery room, escape room, show and tell, and game room. And so if you want to do that as well, feel free to. You don't have to. But I just wanted to show you this. Um, the really cool thing about this is, I have effects, so I just wanted to show this little animated effect. And if you want to do this animated effect, you just click like the box and you click these three dots and you click animate. And it gives you different features of what you can do. Fade in, fade in. That's my one that I love to do a lot. But you can do so many other things like fly in, zoom out, whatever you want. Mine is simple. Fade in now. Present mode and show you how that looks. So stop. This is when the timer is ending and I click and it will say thank you for voting, time is up, chat box is closed. So I just wanted to show you that really cool thing and hopefully that was super, super helpful. Okay, so that's what we're going to also do. So if you want to do that as well with your kiddos, I highly recommend you do that. These are some cool things that we have here that I listed. Something fun that, I'm all, that we are doing as a second grade, my second grade team and I and I think first grade team is, and some of the other grade levels are also doing this, is they're doing movie nights. We're having a second grade movie night where all the students can come watch movies on Thursday and Friday, Thursday and Wednesday. So here Thursday, they get to watch some cool movies and it has a flyer. Again, this flyer, my, one of my great, uh, one of the second grade team is Lee. She created this awesome flyer using Google Slides, y'all. Google Slides. And then this was made from another teacher using poster my wall and this was made by myself just telling my kids on google slides about the luncheon and then here if you scroll down this is wednesday so wednesday october 28th this is i'm also announcing to the parents about the spectacular movie night and miss lee is the second grade teacher who's hosting it we're just having one zoom where every 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 second grade student is going to come in and we're all going to watch it together and so again we watch hocus pocus on Wednesday and then on Thursday we watch Coco. Just for those kiddos who don't really like scary movies but they want to have some fun, Coco is good for them. And then Pocus Pocus is a, not really scary but definitely scary if you're a little kid. <laughs> and then again, I reminding them again on Wednesday. So as you see, this is Wednesday 7 a.m. and this is Wednesday 12 p.m. This is Thursday 6 a.m. and this is Friday 6 a.m. I try my best to remind my parents at least once or twice a day for events and then not to blast them with too much information so too many information so that's for the halloween poster my wall is very good resource and in my google classroom i've been doing a lot of fun activities with the kiddos i like to spice it up with emojis and if you like emojis they're really cool the way that you insert these emojis if you have a mac laptop you'll just click rename and then what you'll do is you will click control command space bar and voila you have your emojis you can click Control Command Space Bar and it will pop up. But if you don't remember that, just click this Edit button at the top and scroll down to Emoji and Symbols and it will pop up. And you can search around any type of features that you want to add. And so that's what I like to do for the Halloween themes. I've been doing that 
for many um, themes that we've had. And so these are some very cool um, things that I have been doing for Google Classroom. So here you go, I have Flipgrid, they draw a cute pumpkin, and on, that was on Monday, October 26th, and then on Wednesday, tomorrow, the students are gonna to get to draw a haunted house. So I just wanted to go into my Flipgrid because I, again, this is video is only related to Halloween, and so I won't get into detail of my, my um, Google Classroom, but here I have the students draw a cute, funny pumpkin. I've had students already respond, 25 responses. What I did was, I inserted a YouTube video. The students had to watch the video to learn how to draw a cute pumpkin. Once they draw the few cute pumpkin, they can show their friends their cute, funny pumpkin. And then I do the same thing as well for um, the haunted house, what they're going to do tomorrow. For haunted house, again, I have the kiddos watch the video to learn how to draw a haunted house. They draw the haunted house and they show their friends their haunted house. And this is very good activity for students who are in elementary school. I know second graders love to draw. So I love to incorporate a lot of different fun activities for the kiddos. I've incorporated a lot of talking activities where they talk out their feelings, they draw their emotions, they do Spanish calendar song, they perform on stage, they tell about myself, indigenous. There's been so many things that I've been doing and I will get into that on another video, but I'm gonna just move forward into my Google Slides and what I do for my morning meeting. So I'm gonna go through and just show you a little run through. That Let me show you, <laughs> I'm talking a lot y'all. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a Halloween bingo near pod fun for my kiddos. I'm going to have three groups. I have this wheel that I have generated with all of the bingo pictures that, will, that the students will see. And I have this random team generator to generate teams for me so that I can tell the students what group they are in. And so this is how the Flipgrid is going to look. So each student, I will use GoGuardian. GoGuardian is a really great tool. If you're not using GoGuardian, I highly recommend it. So I cannot show you right now how it looks because I, I, for privacy reasons, I am not going to show you what my students are doing. So what I'm going to show you though is that this is GoGuardian and it allows you to open new tabs. When you open new tabs, students are able to log into a website quicker and easier. They don't have to type it in themselves. You as a teacher can just type it in on their Chromebook and open it for them. It's a really good tool. So I highly recommend you use this as well if you're having a little difficulty having your kiddos log into different websites online. So what I do is I am gonna to go to Nearpod. So I go to nearpod.com and as, the as a teacher, I will copy this link and I will paste it into the student's Chromebook using GoGuardian. This is how the Nearpod is going to look on the student's view. The student's view, they're going to type in their name, they join the lesson. Once they join the lesson, they're gonna see this Halloween bingo and it has the names and the pictures. So in my wheel, I just have the names. So you see how I have Bumblebee, Handy Bag, Werewolf, Spider, Mummy, Vampire, Cat. Very simple. What I do is I go to Nearpod, I have the kids go live. So this is what I do. I go to Nearpod as a teacher. I'm gonna show you, this is my Nearpod library. I've done a lot of fun things with the kiddos. And so here's the Halloween bingo. I'm gonna do a preview so that you can see. There's three groups, group one, group two, and group three. This is one, how one of the students will look. What the students are going to do is they're going to click preview, they're gonna draw. When I spin the wheel, I'm gonna spin the wheel. click remove and it will remove the word witch but I'm not going to because this is what I'm using for Friday for Thursday after the 29th. Once I click witch I'll say to the kids witch and we're doing this on zoom so this is a fun activity that I'm doing on zoom and the kids are on the screen and they're going saying okay you said witch so then they're going to click one of these um they can choose like blue and they're going to cross out witch so they're going to find witch and they cross out which. And they're gonna, and then I'm gonna spin the wheel again. <laughs> so I click, I can click remove.
remove and it will see it'll remove bumblebee but i want bumblebee back so i'm going to put bumblebee bumblebee and you see it pops there and then what i do is i'll say bumblebee to the kids and they will go oh look for the bumblebee and cross it out until they have bingo again these are groups whichever one of the team members in the group finishes first that group is the winner now this is a really cool site what i highly recommend it randomlist.com all you have to do is write in the students names and you click how many groups you want the number of groups that you want if you want three four five six it doesn't matter it will you'll do rerun and it will generate it for you it could be a custom list decision maker name picker yes or no whatever you like it can generate it for you now this wheel of names is very cool as well i'll show you how i i do a new one so i'm just going to click save this is my halloween bingo spin the wheel click save the way that i do this is i create a new document so i'm going to go back real quick and I'm just gonna show you that if I wanted to write the names of all of these vampires, I can click vampire, um, candy cane, um, no, candy bag, witch, pumpkin, goblin, jack o lantern, lantern. I can also do like pirate. And I'll stop there, but I just want to, I'm going to just stop there just so I can show you what are the things you can do. You can have it big space, all capital letters if you want, or just lowercase. And so here you can, it's in all different language. You can do it all different language from around the world. You can shuffle these words, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. You can sort it by alphabetically shuffle. You can add image instead of the words if you want to. So I can add an image of a pumpkin and look a pumpkin. I can add an image of a, um, let's see, of kids playing around. See, I can do that. So you can add whatever you like and you can just click the spin the wheel. Now the way that I had this picture in the middle was I went to this Halloween bingo and I screenshot this jack-o-lantern. So I screenshot the jack o lantern And the way that I'm getting all this confetti is I click the button customize. So I click this customize button here, and then I click from gallery. I don't have, I can click bicycle. You can click okay, and you see a bicycle pop up. But if I don't like any of them, I can just go ahead and click from custom, and it will upload an image from my from my Mac library. And so I'll click open and then it will insert the Halloween pumpkin that I have. I can make it small, large. I can make it so how big that is. Oh, that's super big. And it's gonna spin the wheel and it's gonna shine. That is huge. You can make it small, you can make it big. I'm gonna, so you can change the size of it. You can make it small. That's what I did. I made it small so it gets smaller. Click customize. You can change the colors to change the colors. And as you see, the colors are now the colors of the Halloween pumpkin. If you notice that, it changes the colors. So you can customize the colors to go to be the background theme of the image. If you want the colors of the of your wheel to match your uh image you can definitely do that so you can pick a category holidays themes or you can have the customized colors be the background after the spin i have these i have the loud applause or the subdued applause you can change it up to whatever you like you can have animate winning entry you can launch a confetti auto remove winner after five seconds this is a display you can have you can say we have a winner play a click sound when the winner is removed you can change it up by saying bingo whatever you want doesn't matter whatever you'd like to type here. And during the spin, you can have ticking sound or you can have a spooky music sound. And that's what I did. Or you can have it spin slowly and let's see how that looks. And that's a cool feature you can do. But again, you can go 
go back and you can do whatever you want. So I just wanted to show you that. It's really cool. Nearpod is really cool as well. Nearpod is easy to do as well. What I do is I'll just go to Nearpod right here and I will create a slide, I create a lesson. What I did for this Halloween bingo, I went to here, I just titled Halloween bingo and I uploaded the file from my finder. I dragged the Halloween bingo into, as a PDF and I made it into insert into individual files. Now it's individual files. I screenshot some of the pictures as well. And after I screenshot the pictures, what I did was I inserted the pictures as a drawing slide. So if I go here to Halloween Bingo, the students cannot draw on it because it is a slide. So if I want the students to draw on it, I'm going to have to screenshot this. So what I do on Mac is I put Shift Command 4 and then I try my best to screenshot going over the picture. Then I click Save and Exit. Once I have that screenshot, I'm going to insert a new slide and a new activity as Draw It. So I go to Draw It, click Add Activity, and I go to Draw It. Once I have Draw It open, then I go ahead and I insert the image that I screenshot. Now you can insert instructions for the kiddos if this is if, so that the kiddos know what to do. You can say right click, click, or draw on the picture Miss Campbell calls aloud. So I can give them instructions. I can even add audio, add image, and I can add audio recorder where I allow and record my voice. Add image, draw on the picture, Miss Campbell calls. And I just can do that. Record my voice. Add image, draw on the picture, Miss Campbell calls. Or I can even say, please subscribe. If you're liking this video, like and comment below. <laughs> record my voice. Add image. And so that's really cool stuff. You can save that. And so then I use this feature of zooming in and out and just moving this picture up a little bit so the students can see this part. And then I just filter with that. And I click Save. Once I'm done, I'll click Save. And now it's a draw. Now the students can draw on the, the picture. So when they the way that they would draw on it is they would have to click the the pencil so i'll go back click save and i'll give you a preview i think i showed you all a preview before but again if you are unclear as a teacher you can click preview and you can see how it will look as a student so you understand if they will be able to draw on it or if they will be able to see the pictures clearly and visibly and so this is how it looks you click that arrow the students will see this they'll go ahead and click blue. It's a little blurry. And so if it's a little blurry like this, what I recommend is just screenshotting the PDF so the students can draw until they have bingo. And that's what I'm going to do for my morning meeting. I hope this was helpful for you all. Hopefully you had some ideas and you have some cool ideas to share with your kiddos and implement in your classroom. Many people may not celebrate Halloween. I don't really celebrate it, but I just do it for the kiddos. I'm teaching a diverse group of students who like Halloween, who like to dress up for the fun and for the candies and for the treats and just for the, the entertainment. So I want to bring back that little bit of normalcy for my kiddos, let them have fun because this is normally what I would do in the school in person. I would play bingo. I would have treats. I would have movie time. I would have virtual trick or treat, we would have trunk or treat our school. And so we wanna bring that for our kids here at my school. And as a second grade team, we want to incorporate a lot of fun, fun activities for the kiddos so that they enjoy it and that they're not feeling bored or feeling left out or feeling frustrated at distance learning. 
We want it to be highly fun and I love engaging my kiddos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long and I hope you are now ready to tackle this week. Have a wonderful week. Have a blessed week. Please be safe. Thank you so much for watching this video. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. I'll see you soon.